What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the Locker Room, episode 11. And the Giants are preparing for the Detroit Steel Wings, coached by Crimson Seabad, aka Chase, a good friend of mine and fellow division rival, also hunting for a playoff spot. This is a huge game, guys. It, it's coming down to this. Basically, I have. Let's kind of explain this. I have one game advantage, uh, one win advantage over both the Steel Wings and the Utah Jasmine. And if I beat the Steel Wings, that means the Jasmine at best can match my record if they win this week and I play them next week and then they would have to beat me next week. Um, that is the best they can possibly do because they're sit I'm sitting at... What am I? I'm six and four. They're both five and five. So, uh, if I get to seven and four, Crimson cannot catch me because he has to win out in order to do that. If I get one more win, and Stevo cannot catch me, um, but he can tie me. So basically, if I win this, I am guaranteed to make it to the playoffs because the only person, well. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. If I win this match, I'm guaranteed to get to the playoffs. If I lose, there's still lots of ways I can make it. One is I beat Necrostevo, um, and then I make it. Another is Necrostevo loses, and then even if Necrostevo beats me next week, it comes down to differential. So, because if he loses this week, then the best record he can get is 6-6. Six and six. Because he would be five and six, he would become six and six if he beat me. But I have a significant um, differential advantage over him, so that's my playoff picture right now. So this is a very important battle. On the left of the screen, you can see my the team of six that I'm bringing. That is Moana, the Tapu Fini, Mad Mens, the Salamence, Fresh, the Arcanine, Dumbledore, the Kinkelder, Trip, the Amoongus, and Zong, the Bronzong. On the uh, above me, on the right side of the screen, you can see the 11 Mon he's drafted, and I have, as usual, organized them kind of tiered based on what I think he is likely to bring. So we got the Cabalion, the Crocodile, who is his Z Captain, the Tornadus Therian, the Slowbro, Sylveon, Magneton, Curum, Volcarona, Dust Noir, Serena, and Smeargle. Um, Looking at what we have here, looking at uh, what's above me and how it matches up against my team, it's not necessarily that I think Cabalion is the best Pokemon he can bring for me. But he loves that Pokemon. It is currently number one in the MVP race. I think he wants to maintain that, and last game it swept me. So I think it's really likely that he brings it, regardless of what it does against my team. Uh, next we have the... Uh, Crocodile. That's his Z Captain. He's brought it a lot. It's number two in the kill rankings. So both of them are very potent offensive threats uh, that I have to look out for. We've then got the Tornadus T. Great coverage, fast regenerator. Um, then we've got the Slowbro. Great coverage, slow regenerator. <laughs> and then we've got the Sylveon. Looking at the top row, those are his offensive core mon. He's brought them a lot. They're very effective Pokemon decent against my team as well and uh, lots of different options which is a big thing for him uh, looking at this looking at this matchup for us the slow bro um, I think it the slow bro is like what he tried to make his slow King last time he battled for me if you don't know he traded slow King for slow bros so this is one of the new mons I think he brings it because it walls fairly effectively both the Salamence and the fresh so he thinks, and we'll come back to that one. Sylveon, he brought it last time too. It's a Ments answer. I, I anticipate he's going to bring a lot of Ments answers. I almost didn't want to bring it, except uh, I think I can. I think I can work a lot with the Ments this week. Uh, the Magneton, he brought it last time um, uh, when I had no electric resists. I think there's a good chance he brings it this time. However, unlike the other three core offensive Mon. It's almost equally as likely that he brings either Curum or Volcarona if he's looking for an additional offensive threat. Uh, Curum is, of course, walled pretty effectively by the Tapu Fini. Um, 
not too worried. I think it's a pretty good switch into the Q room, even if it's specs. I remember doing some calcs for just standard moves and stuff like that. So, uh, not super likely brings the Q room. However, Feeny is one of those mons that it can get whittled down, and the next thing you know, uh, it's gone and Q room is a threat. The Volcarona. Ha. <sighs> um can be great or it can not be great it really depends what he ends up bringing there's a chance he brings kind of a bulky quiver dance set and that would actually be somewhat of a problem for my team however i think i can chip away at it i think there's a, a possibility that i can wear it down and, and take it out anyway the bottom row you have mon that they have their uses um but it's something if he brings them it's more because he's got a goal in mind about what he wants them to do that's dust more bulky as anything uh really really bulky however I, I have answers for it the serena that's his only real rapid spinner barring smeargle being a rapid spinner or a defogger which is not likely um mr phone absolutely not um so i don't really think serena comes honestly and even if it does i got i got great switch-ins for it i'm not too worried and then finally the smeargle i put it last not because i'm like there's no way he brings smeargle but because uh, you you never can tell he's got a ton of mons he's got about eight mons that are very have a very good niche position to take on my 11 and i i, I don't smeargle is just do you have a plan to do something special with smeargle then try and execute it and that's that's where i reside with smeargle at the moment um because we don't allow baton passing of speed it's not like he can geomancy um, which is a, a popular set. People love to run Geomancy Baton Pass. He could set up webs, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you, you really cannot tell with that mon, but I, I do have answers for it. Let's go into the team builder now, guys. So uh, this week, as I said, we'll start off with the Dumbledore. Dumbledore is Assault Vest Guts. Drain Punch, Knock Off, Poison Jab, Rock Slide. It's I wanted to be able to take a hit. I wanted to be able to deliver a hit. Um, it can threaten and put pressure on quite a lot of the Pokemon that he has. Um, I don't have Mach Punch on it. We'll see whether or not I regret that. The Poison Jab is to have some super effective coverage against the Sylveon. The Knock Off is for... to get rid of an item on pretty much anything. It's a pretty safe click a lot of the time, because uh, he doesn't have a whole a ton of Dark Resists. It's a great attack for the Dusk Noir. Um, uh, it's a great attack to remove any item and scout for the Z-move on some of the other things. The Rock Slide is for the Volcarona. I can take a Volcarona hit relatively well thanks to the Assault Vest. Rock Slide Okos um, has a chance to flinch. Strain Punch is my stab of choice, which is going to do great against the Kyurem, the Cabalion, the uh, Crocodile, the Magneton, the Smeargle. Um... Yeah, and then just and then just not his walls, basically not his walls. So I'll be looking to knock those off, poison jab those, get in and out and move about. That's kind of Kinkelder's role this week. Just a random mix spread, put some numbers in weird places. The speed is so that I don't get creeped by something like the slow bro. Uh, <laughs> just just a little bit of speed. Uh, most of the rest of it in uh, a little bit of bulk in one way or the other just to make it a little hard to predict you know i love random numbers uh moving on to fresh guys this is i'm so proud <laughs> it's coming back guys it's coming back this is caliente version 2.0 this is sunny day weakness policy arcanine running the flare blitz solar beam and flame charge i was very seriously considering Rock in the extreme speed. The reason I didn't is that it is resisted by the Cabalion, and then Cabalion outspeeds me without it. I have enough. It's not likely to run a scarf on that Cabalion, uh, and after one flame charge, the only thing that is likely, as far as I'm looking at the team, likely to be scarfed is that Crocodile, and I outspeed it if it is scarfed. So, the goal here get a flame charge off on. If I scare something out, Get a flame charge off. I would anticipate the switch into me would be a slow bro. Set up the sunny day, tank a scald, and then pop it with a plus two solar beam. You all know the drill. If I get to plus two on Arcanine, his team is devastated. A plus two solar beam takes out the crocodile, 
A plus two solar beam takes out the uh, slow bro. My only issue with this is if I if I don't find the right situation, if I don't scare something out with the flare blitz, if he plays around it beautifully, and I end up taking too much damage to be able to take a scald even under the sun. That's my problem. Uh, another problem would be if it's uh, if it's a calm mind slow bro or potentially an assault vest slow bro, it might be able to eat. Uh, more than one solar beam, which again should be okay. The so the scald should only do about 30 to 40 percent, something like that, unless it's very well invested. And uh, and so that could be a problem. The flare blitz destroys his team at plus two, just destroys it, which makes sense. It stands to reason. And honestly, it just it puts me in a great position. This thing is can switch in pretty well against the dusk noir. Dusk noir shouldn't really be able to deal with it too much it might have earthquake um but dust noir's it's attacks 100 but and it's very defensive guys i mean dust noir is very defensive but again I, I think there's better tanks for it to bring um and if i get an intimidate off on it i'm not too worried about its earthquake uh, i if i'm being perfectly honest and i, I don't it's not something that i feel is really likely you might have toxic which could prove to be quite annoying um but we can we can make moves around that we can play around that and kind of and sort of see what happens dust norm is a risky a risky mon to be my setup target i think one of the things i would like better is uh being in on the the magneton or you know, it's one of those things I might even lead with fresh. If it's if it's the Magneton and it goes for and it specs, uh, I can outspeed it, so I don't imagine it would stay in. Uh, if it's scarfed, then my assumption is that he would click Volt Switch and get out of there right away. So fresh is a decent lead option for me. I really want this to work. The stars need to align. They really do, and it it has the potential to completely fail completely but you guys know this set you've seen this set before it has the potential for massive massive production and there's only a few sets on that slow bro that can really um do anything back against me and so i really want this to work <laughs> i really want this to work uh, but we'll have to see we'll have to wait and see how it goes uh, moving on, we've got the Bronzong. Uh, power Belt again. I really like the Power Belt. Um, it's still surprising a lot of people. The Gyro Ball can hit really hard. Uh, Earthquake is good coverage for things that resist the Gyro Ball, namely the Magneton or the Cabalion. Uh, I really want Stealth Rocks against him. He's got two Regenerators. I want to make sure that they're not pulling all of their HP back every single time. It's really good against the Torn. Um, it's incredible against the Volcarona and uh, Trick Room is sort of there again. It's I don't really know. There's not really much for that last move could be toxic doesn't really matter None of those things really matter for it Trick Room provides me with a situation where um, If I can survive two more hits, I'm only gonna get one attack off anyway Might as well Trick Room get my last attack off potentially bring in Dumbledore and makes make a mess out of things um, Trip is coming that oh, he's fully specially defensive and heat proof i forgot to mention that this is really important there's there's not much reason for me to be levitate here uh if the if the cabalion is running coverage it's probably going to be rock not uh earthquake and that's because it hits mints and fresh both super effectively uh whereas earthquake only does one uh the earthquakes are likely to be coming from the um from the crocodile and he's just as potentially just as likely to hit knock off or a dark move anyway so it's not safe for me to stay in against him it's not safe for me to switch in against him and i don't really have much for him anyway so the reason for heat proof is that it makes uh, a heat wave from a life orb torn t do very little to me so i can tank that a lot better i can actually take a hit from the volcarona pretty well also and uh, while I can't do a ton back to it, I can hit it f with neutral earthquake. Uh, it's still every little bit counts. It provides me with that safe switch in. 
Uh, it also helps me if he's opting to run HP Fire on the Magneton, if he does choose to go for a lock set. Uh, last time he brought Analytic, which I think was a smart move this time. Maybe it does make more sense for him to have uh, the trap to try and get rid of Bronzong, but I do have Earthquake for that situation. So I think it's more likely he would just end up clicking Volt Switch anyway. Uh, I'm fully specially defensive, so I can take that relatively well, and he won't be getting the analytic boost off it. So there's that. Mr. Trip, uh, max defensive. His goal is to take on the Cabalion and the Crocodile. Crocodile's coverage that he would have for this Ice Fang, Fire Fang, he might as well just be clicking Earthquake anyway, because it's neutral. Outside of it being banded, it can't two-hit KO me with Earthquake. Um, and I think it's more likely that he's a Z move. I can survive a Stone Edge into a Continental Crush, so I'm okay there. Giga Drain does a massive amount of damage to it. The reason uh, I'm also running HP Ground because good switch ins to this are his Steel types, and I want to be able to hit those. Toxic is great for the Sylveon, it's great for the Slowbro, especially that Calm Mind Slowbro we were talking about earlier. Even though it can run Psy Shock. Uh, I'll tank that pretty well thanks to my massive defense investment. Uh, I can clear Smog away, whatever it's got, and Giga Drain's likely to break subs if he's bringing subs on it. I can get a Toxic off on it or the Sylveon, which would be very helpful for me. Um, also, a good switch into Trip in general is the Torn T, and so I want to be able to whittle that thing. Whittling is, is huge for that Torn T, especially if he opts to run the Assault Vest set on it. So that's the reason I'm running Toxic. Uh, I don't want... Uh, if he brings safety goggles to have a good switch in for Spore, doesn't block Toxic, which is also super useful for me to uh, to note. Uh, the Serena, it would be nice to have uh, Sludge Bomb to really wreck that thing. Uh, oh well. And the Sylveon, I'm not too hit KOing it with Sludge Bomb anyway. I was considering running a very offensive Assault Vest set. But I opted against it. Uh, instead, the Rocky Helmet will be good to pick up additional damage chip on the Cabalion. The Cabalion, uh, it can set up due to the the clear smog, of course, like not affecting it, of course. So HP ground to get as much damage off on it as possible. You can potentially threaten it out with the Conkelder, uh, faking the Mach Punch. Uh, the Arcanine, of course, uh, can do a lot to it. I do have double. Um, so, uh, double... Double Intimidate, which could be useful uh, if it tries setting up against me. We have Moana also, Leftovers, um, Surf, Moonblast, Calm Mind, Defog. I, I needed its typing, it's great against Curum, it, it really discourages the Curum if he ends up bringing it. If I didn't bring it, uh, I would have a pretty difficult time against it, especially since Bronzong does not have um, Levitate this week. Surf, Moonblast, uh, it's, just, it's just decent coverage, he doesn't have anything on the team that resists both. Uh, Calm Mind is because if he makes the wrong play with the Slowbro, maybe he tries to make a defensive switch into the Tapu Fini, getting a couple of Calm Minds up could be really, really useful for me. After a couple, I can take hits from the Magnezone pretty well, or Magneton pretty well. Uh, a decent amount of speed investment. This outspeeds the Magneton he brought last time. Um, outspeeds things that might be trying to speed creep Feeny. It's, uh, it's quite a fast Feeny. It's decent defensive investment, so it's a decent switch in also to the uh, Crocodile. Of course, you with Crocodile, you have to look out for a lot of its potential coverage moves. Um, I believe, and I'm just... Man, this, whenever I'm on a time branch, it always takes a long time to load up what I'm looking for on Smogon. Um, I think it has... Uh, a poison coverage, a yeah, sludge bomb, and toxic. That might be it. Yeah, it looks like just sludge bomb and toxic. So never mind that. It does have thunder fang, but I'm not too worried about that one. Um, I think it has grass knot also. It does have grass knot. Uh, either way, it's it's a decent switch into crocodile. Of course, I don't have uh, great reliable recovery on Moana, so the thing can be chipped, so if it doesn't have anything in particular that it walls, and if I don't see it likely that he's getting up rocks this match, Moana's decent to have around. It's a decent switch if it looks as though his only rock setter is Crocodile, because uh, he very well might lead with it. Uh, and finally, Mad Mentz running Crunch, Earthquake, Iron Tail, Darkinium Z, Moxie, Dragon Dance. After one Dragon Dance, I can feel pretty confident that I outspeed a whole lot of his team, probably everybody. 
uh, because I don't, again, I don't see it likely. The two Mon that outspeed it naturally are Torn T and Cabalion. I don't see either of them being uh, scarfed. Uh, the Crunch, Earthquake, Iron Tail, Dragon Dance combo with Moxie is very good for me. I think that Slowbro is his ideal first switch into me. So if I do get one Dragon Dance up, the Darkinium Z Crunch, uh, Black Hole Eclipse, can really hurt that thing. Uh, certainly to hit KO it after a Crunch, so that could be huge for me. And then getting being uh, plus two, plus one uh, after a Moxie boost, getting a kill, uh, becomes very difficult for the... Sylveon to switch in on me because I do have the Iron Tail. Of course, I have to hit it. <laughs> I hate these moves, but, you know, it, it it runs the risk. I have multiple Mon that have the potential, if the situation occurs right, to sweep his entire team. That is fresh, and that is Ments. I have a lot of decent switch-ins in the mid-game in Trip, Moana, and Bronzong. So, the idea is get a little bit of whittle on things. Set up the situation, and then sack something that doesn't that's done its job. Most likely Bronzong. Um, after I've gotten at least some damage off on that Torn T. I don't want the Torn T in. Uh, I'm supposed to be an answer to Torn T, so I, I don't really want Tornadus T killing the Bronzong um, when Bronzong goes down. I need the Torn T out of the match, or, or not currently switched in when that's the case. So, uh, I'm going to go battle Chase right now uh, a little bit a little bit later than I wanted it to be, uh, but that is okay. It is my day off. I am stoked. I am happy, and uh, I am nerve excited about this battle but i'm really looking forward to it this is our playoff dreams right here guys one win here it makes it extremely likely that we make the playoffs not mathematically impossible that i'm out uh it depends on the win but i really i really want this win guys i really want this win let's see if we can get it let me know in the comment section down below what you guys thought would have brought for this matchup as always my name is jim leader geo you guys are the challengers thanks for stopping by and i'll see you guys next time